Live at Mandalay Bay with Nick French. <laughs> <laughs> Nicholas, let's ask you, what is... Um, we're here, obviously, at Mandalay Bay for the 2015 NAHA Awards as well. We're presenting this year with Matrix. What does this all mean to you, and why is it so special to you? Um, NAHA, I have a great history with NAHA. Um, for many, 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 many years, I've been involved in it when it wasn't even at this location, actually, and I love it to death. And I'm so pleased that Matrix has decided to present here. Um, I presented about seven years ago, did a presentation between all the different segments, and that was great fun, and it was really cool. So I'm, I'm pleased to be here. I think it's very edgy experience we're going to have. <laughs> yeah, edgy is a good word. So, listen, I remember being here with you yeah. in 2006. Um, there was six people here with you. There was you, your wife, me, your photographer, Joseph Carwright, That's right. and then two of, uh, two of your friends, Tracy and Brian uh, Greaves. Yeah. So, what do you think how crazy it is to see, like, last year... <laughs> How many people are here in all of Naha? But even more so, how many people are here from like the L'Oreal family and Matrix? What does that mean to you? Because you kind of started it's this sort of, whole thing. Yeah, it's, it's sort of huge because I'm not very good at competitions. I'm a really bad loser. <laughs> so, um, and my wife said to me, Carl said to me, you go, go in for it. So, no six. Um, funny, when we worked together um, and you came to the studio and you saw me shooting avant garde, and there were sort of very pasty, white, almost nude girls with sort of Chinese kind of avant-garde hairstyles. And, uh, and I had no idea what avant-garde was. <laughs> no, and you, said, and you said, I think your words were, I don't know what this beep beep is, but I'd love to get into it, and I'd love to do, um, you know, avant-garde work. Uh, moving forward six years, I'm on the stage in 2012, and I, I won avant-garde in 2012. And halfway through my speech, because you have to say a few corporate things, yeah. I suddenly remembered, actually, you know, this is wonderful, because there's somebody sitting in the finalist arena and there's only five of us all together. And that person was the person who came into my studio in 2006, didn't know what he was doing, where he was going with hair, as far as avant-garde was concerned. Uh, a great colorist and a cutter, of course. And um, the rest is history. So you feel very privileged to be part of your journey, even if it's 5%. Uh, you've, you've been a huge part of, of my journey as well. No, and I think it's crazy, like for me, being uh, nominated this year, you know, two times in a row yeah. now, uh, and three overall for avant-garde. Um, no, I feel like it's a. I feel like it's a great way to put the ripple effect, the legacy, as we talk about, yeah. um, of what you've laid down. And you know, as I've told you, I think that it's like you know, while you're not on that stage this weekend, you are because you're a part of me, and vice versa. And I just think it's cool to see the legacy be able to be passed on from um, what you've set a precedence of, and to carry it. So yeah. I thank you for that because that's. I, I truly would not be doing. Especially this category, <laughs> let's be honest, <laughs> without Colors a lot of your cats, guide, yeah, sure. a lot of your guidance and help. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, so that's pretty you, cool. Thank you for that. But I think it's important, you know, Chris, that um, and my father was a great hairdresser, mm. and uh, he used to say to me, you know, Nick, you've really got to leave behind. He was a great believer in the industry, and he wanted to move it in uh, the whole echelon to to raise the bar. Um, you know, so hairdressers are recognised by the public as being really creative people. And uh, he always used to say to me, you know, put your hand out and help people and bring them forwards and, and let them have your experience so you can add to what they know as professional hairdressers. And then the whole industry will, will gain, not because I'm so good, it's because I've been hairdressing 50 years. So there's a lot of information that I've got that a lot of you guys haven't got, so I want to give it to you so you can move forwards and, and move the industry forwards because it's really what people in my era, you know, and lots of people like Martin Parsons, Atlanta Muscola, Trevor Sorby, all these people. It's what we leave behind is actually more important sometimes to what we do today, you know? And I think that's important for our industry. No, and I think you guys have really instilled that in, like, the next generation, my generation, um, which we try and instill to the next generation under us. But I think that's a huge thing to instill is, is give credit where credit's due. Own what you do yeah. and make it your own and pass it on. Yeah, make it your own and, you know? You know, and pass it on and, and develop it. You know, mm. it's like... Um, I'm always trying to develop new things. So are you, I know, and we work together all the time. Um, and I think this weekend is going to be great because we're doing the graffiti presentation. And it's really, uh, that's the inspiration, isn't it? Mm. But we've taken it to a different place. I know you have. Very different place. <laughs> Very different place. <laughs> no, and it's exciting. Yeah. It's exciting to see seven artistic directors from Matrix come together yeah. under, you know, one uh, amazing concept mm. and take it from, you know, what used to be something that's street 
and really raw mm. into something that now you see like a Banksy getting hundreds of thousands of dollars for art. Mm. And, you know, so graffiti's changed. And I think it's a, it's what you take from mm. it, the elements. Like in anything we do in here, it's like what do you take the elements from and how do you translate that to the salon? How do you mm. translate that to make money? How do you translate that to inspire people? And yeah. I think it'll definitely be something that'll be inspiring tonight. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. I, think, I think it's moving forwards. I mean, I've just been researching, as you know, great artists and who were the graffiti mode. And one of the greatest artists ever was Jackson Pollock. Pollock. Yeah. And I actually went to his home. He came ex- to the exhibition and saw the, what was left on the floor. And I thought, ooh, perhaps I can bring that to the table. And now I'm developing it. And... Um, you are the first people to see it today. It's developing on now. But, I mean, that's an inspiration to me. So hopefully that'll be an inspiration to other hairdressers. No, and it's so cool. For me, it's so cool to watch. Um, I mean, obviously, we, we're both very driven people. But, you know, to see uh, your legacy, your age, to be as driven and still not settled into the comfort zone, which I think a lot of people, I mean, I've, I've done it. I've settled in. Uh, you know, you've settled in at mm-hmm. different points. But to see where you're at right now and really pushing past what – you've developed and to try new things is so cool well, I think and it's so so be, gratifying to watch it's man. funny i was doing a talk to some young people the other day and they didn't really get what i was saying i was you know uh, god bless them and i i said you know how do you say in simple words what we do you know and good luck if you if you figure that out can you tell me <laughs> and so i said like you know the word life you know and i said a lot of people when they take if out of life they say, if only I'd done this, if only I'd, you know, if only I'd been as lucky as that person, if only I'd been, you know, all these sort of negative things, yeah. you know? And I thought, well, why don't we change the if into innovate fearlessly, yeah? And also the L-E, which is what's left of the life word, um, you know, really love everybody, love everything, you know? And I mean, if you tell ter- terrible things, you take the F out, it's lie. <laughs> Do you know that? <laughs> It was really, I thought about what was that about? And I put the other back in and go, what was the close one? But seriously, it's got so much in just the words life. You're so cute, you, I love you. But, you know, and they said, oh, okay, that's what it's about. I said, yeah, you have to be uncomfortable to learn something new. No, that's true. And I always say to myself, and I saw this on the store once, and when was the last time, I always say to myself, when was the last time did I create something new for, for the, the first, first time. time? Remember that? Yeah, it's like we've, we, you know, like we've I've heard this years, some, but somewhere. I keep reminding myself. <laughs> no, but it's true. About it, it's true. And and I, don't, you know, don't imitate, innovate. Yeah. And that's another. Actually, now, um, I rest my case with that because sometimes you have to imitate first before you innovate. You know, you have to, you know what I mean? And it's, it's like Picasso said, who's an amazing man. Um, and, and he said, you know, really good artists don't borrow ideas, they steal them. Mm-hmm. And I think that's really cool for us. <laughs> no, yeah. And I make it and your own. I, like and I love it in the industry. Make it your own and yeah. take it away. No, and I love you know? in the industry because people talk about stealing clients or you stole my client. Nobody can steal anything, really. I mean, you're going to take things, and we all, we all take mm-hmm. things from each other, and that's the beauty of it. And I think the biggest thing is making it your own. But it's how you make it your own and leaving that credible you know, legacy of where did it come from? Because I didn't just jump into this industry and know the stuff I know. I was, yeah. you know, I had amazing people around me as you've had amazing people around you. And I think that that's how we don't forget where we've been, mm. but also, you know, yeah. we're going different places as well. So let me ask you this. If you had one thing, because we get this all the time, I get this question all the time. If you had one thing to tell you, if you could have you sitting here at a young age, young like me, <laughs> <laughs> Very if you jealous. could have you it's sitting here, years, yeah. right? <laughs> well, Nick, you've done hair longer than I've been alive. Let's just, I just want to put that in reality. Here. Yeah, 15 years. Yeah. You've done hair longer than I've been alive. So yeah. you definitely have a lot of credibility. If you could tell yourself, uh, let's say 30 years old, when you got into this business, what you know now, what would be the one thing you would tell yourself, your younger self, and other hairdressers that would be something that you would want to know moving forward? What would it be? What I would want to know for is, I mean, I want to know everything moving forward. I want to know. It's like my, my first hair show I ever went to as a cocky young London kid. My dad went with me. My dad was a famous hairdresser. And, um, and it, it, it's the way you learn and the way you teach is two things that are really important. And the way you learn is like my dad said to me, Nick, did you like what that Silvio Camillo hairdresser did? And I said, no, I didn't. And he said, you know, you went to the destination without taking the journey. Did you see the way he stood? Did you see the way he moved his scissors, his shears? Did you see the way he sat there? Did you see how beautifully he brushed it out? I said, I didn't like the hairstyle. He says, that's not the point. Mm. You know, and I really want to be able to 
you know, teach in a wonderful way that's not aggressive. It really helps people come up. And people didn't teach me, they were brutal. They said, this is wrong, this is right, this is wrong, this is right. And then my first haircut at, at Sassoon's when I passed my test, it took me six and a half hours. And I didn't pass my test. They told me this is the worst haircut they'd ever seen in their lives. And I cried all the way home, you know? So I eventually passed five times later, that's what I was meant to say. Because, you know, I it thought it was perfect. And I did it with a mirror, with the girl sitting yeah. in front of me like that. And they said, no, no, no. And they put the mirror underneath. Changes everything. And it looks like chopped suey. It was like, it wasn't, you know, it was, it was horrible. You know, and I think, I think it's a matter of what you, you've got to be very, very hungry every day of your life. Mm. And even on, you have to get through bad days to get to good days. Sometimes you have a lot of bad days. But you've got to really be positive and really just shrug your shoulders off when you do something that's not right and just move on to the, the next thing. Or mm. think about something else sometimes. You know, you have to get through bad times all the time. No, I think, and I think you have to have a good day. Uh, you have to have a bad day to know what a good day is. And, you know, sad but true, most of yeah, yeah. the things I've learned in life, you are usually what people consider a failure. Yeah. Somebody considers, you know, something that was bad time in your life. Um, and you can dwell on that. Right? I mean, there's, everybody has things they could dwell on, but I think it's what do you do with it and what's going to push you forward and what's the yeah. conscious decision to move forward uh, and do something for you in your life. I always others. think you've really got to reach for the moon mm. and you might catch a star on the way down. You know, go, go for, you know, go for broke every time. Why, why would you, life's very short. Why would you want to be sitting around thinking, or, you know, perhaps I'll wait and think, no, don't, just do it. Just don't think about it, do it. Mm. And, and see what the results are and just analyze who you are and what you are. You know, it's a journey of emotion, mm. hairdressing. You know, if you, you know mm. as a hair cutter, you know, if, you, if you're angry, you get an angry haircut. If you're happy, you get a happy haircut. <laughs> you know, I've, I've had a few of those. <laughs> yeah, no, it's that true. sensitive. And I think that's very important to understand, to make young people understand that it's not just, um, you know, it, it's like art. It's like art. It's like, you know, I mean, Picasso drew amazing paintings through so many different periods, so many different attitudes, you know. And then other people after him did amazing things where they didn't like figurative, so they just threw paint on canvas and... Um, to experiment, to see what they could do, how they could change art, mm. and, and pe how people could respect artists. You know, mm. I mean, um, uh, Pollock's painting sold for 18.2 million six weeks ago, you know, and he, he died poor at 44, but, mm. you know, it was just the idea, it's not the painting, it splashes of paint, nice looking, interesting, but it, no, it's not the painting, it's having the idea. Mm -hmm. And if you have the idea, and you can self-start your creative engine. That's the thing, to be an artist, you have to self-start your creative engine. You can copy so much, but then you have to have, wow, I like that idea. I'm going to take it. I'm going to use it. I'm going to create something amazing. And it, it will come like, you know, self-raising flower to the top of the cake, really. You know, you've got to think, but you've got to really think about how can you achieve it? How can you create something new that nobody else has done? And that's the only way you're going to change the industry and take it to a higher level. And I think it's getting there, um, but it's, it's slow, you know? Mm. It's slow, you know, and I think there's a final thing from my point of view. Um, I was in a country, I won't mention where it is, and they interviewed me after my show, and then the last person interviewed me said, Nicholas, why does somebody of your age come to our country and teach our young people how to do hair? And years ago I would have said something immediately, but I didn't. I said, oh, that's a good question, thank you for your question. And I thought, ooh, how can I answer that question? So I looked out the window in this beautiful country, and I saw... A Calvin Klein ad, and, and he had a girl and a boy who was sort of topless. And I said, can I ask you a question? So the interpreter did the language thing. And uh, I said, yeah. I said, how, how old do you think Calvin Klein is? And so we don't know. I said, he's 64. I said, how old do you think um, Valentino is? He's 83. How old do you think uh, Ralph Lauren is? 62, you know? How old do you think uh, even Alexander McQueen was 45 or whatever it was? And I said, do you think they've had any influence on young people? And I said, what's the difference between a couturier dressed as who I love clothes, by the way, I love them to death. I said, but they can cut and color fabric, mm. yeah? We actually have to stand behind a live human being mm -hmm. and create a fabric out of their hair. And, and basically, we can change their lives with our hands and a pair of shears and a coloring brush or whatever we have. And that's, that's the difference. It's, it's colossal. Mm -hmm. And I think that's how important we are in the big picture. You know, as professional hairdressers. No, I think that's a great point. And then dealing with people's personalities as well, yeah. which, you know, I think uh, is so different than an uh, inanimate object, right? I mm -hmm. mean, you know, because we've all had that experience where something's gone incredible, 
-hmm. We've also had that experience where you put something on somebody, you're like, yeah, right. that just did not <laughs> work, right? So I think you know we're also dealing in uh, in the personality avenue, which is very interesting as well, mm -hmm. um, and very unique for our industry uh, as opposed to the rest of the industries out there. So yeah, it's like my dad used to say: if you don't understand the inside of clients' head. You're never going to get the outside right. <laughs> and as he left the room, he said, good luck. Yeah. <laughs> isn't that so true, though? No, it? it's very true. It's very you know, true. You can do the most fabulous haircut and color on somebody, and you never see them again in your life. Mm, that's true. on the wrong hat and the wrong person. Yeah. So anything else yeah. you want to say? Well, oh, so much, so little time, and, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> i got to do hair, but it's... Uh, no, I, I think, <laughs> uh, you know, when, I, when I'm in the hairdressing salon in the sky in the future... I'm looking down, I'm going to see people like Christopher here uh, leading the pack and doing, hopefully, an amazing job, which he always has done. I think, you know, taking this industry to, uh, to probably to a different place, rather like the couturiers have all the, you know, all the press, go to the runway shows, and they're all running down there with ponytails. Oh, that's a new hair fashion, please. It's not. You know, it might right. be a mood, it might be a, uh, something, you know, that it, it's a feeling, it's a mood that might sort of, you know, renovate... You know, through the world, but at the same time, you know, we're the hairdressers. You know, give us credit for that. We're the people who are trained to do this incredible job, um, and I think that's something we've got to really think about for the future. You know, yep. so people will be going to runway shows, but their hair will be really directed by hairdressers and really be part of the whole fashion scene yep. and be respected at that same level. Yep. You know, and I think if, if I could see that in my lifetime, um, you know, I'd be a very, very happy man because I think that's. What I've always believed in, my dad always believed that. Mm -hmm. He was the first hairdresser to go from England to do a French runway show in Paris. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't lend, lend him a hairdryer or anything. He had to ship it all over. <laughs> they were so jealous. <laughs> it was Madame Grey, and he came into this beautiful hair. And they loved, then they started talking to him, you know. And then he started getting involved, and then he went back to England, and he got all kinds of societies for hairdressers. He helped, you know, found British Intercoiffeur. He was there for six years as president. He really galvanized hairdressers to be proud of who they were and what they do, yeah. um, which in those days was tough. Um, and they were almost like servants. And I think in the future, um, now we've got to this stage, it needs to be taken to the next level. And we need people with courage and fortitude um, who can really negotiate the hairdresser into a better place in society. Mm. No, I think that that's in, you know it makes incredible sense. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna say this because you know we had a moment last year where you actually gave the Avant Garde Award away yeah. and um, and I didn't win again. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've lost more times than I've I won. Yeah. I was trying to change the name, but they caught me. <laughs> but um, you know, I just I just I just want to say. If... No. Shh, 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 shh. Yeah, you can go. <laughs> No, I just want to say, um, you know, that was a moment for me that I would have loved yeah. just for the opportunity to, A, thank you for all the stuff you've done for me and the influence. Um, because, you know, as we met, I was a cutter, a colorist. I didn't know yeah. avant-garde work. Yeah. So to be in this, um, again, this year is just beyond, beyond crazy for me. Um, but I want you to know something. I want you to really, really realize, I mean, and I hope you guys hear the history that Nick talks about and the legacy that he has um, come from but I also want you to realize the legacy you've created and from the bottom of my heart I want you to really really resonate this because I don't think you give yourself enough credit I think that you really you know look to your dad and I know how big of an influence yeah. he is and you give him so much credit I think you got to give yourself as much credit for what you do and the influence you've created the mark you've made and the people that you've passed it on to because um, I'm one sitting here. Oh, I love it. I love in, it. In, to mirror back to you what you've done. I hope tomorrow night you make the right decision. <laughs> <laughs> I hope. I hope the third time's a charm, Nick. <laughs> so seriously, from the bottom of my heart, and and there's many people that would say that same thing. I just want you to know how much we love you, how much we respect you, and how much of an honor you know on a daily basis that I can pick up a phone and know that you're there. Right. That's a Enjoy. that's an amazing thing. But to be able to work on stages, work backstage with you, you know what a, what a ride. What a ride. I think it's a joy as well to know that people in our industry have got the enthusiasm 
um, to move it forwards and get excited about new things and, and to take information and use it. Yes. You know? Yeah. It's like my wife, you always used to say, you know, Carol always used to say, oh, no, don't show anybody that. It's <laughs> sort of what it's I do. kind of what we do. Like, oh, they're copying us. That's fabulous, you know? It's the biggest form of flattery, you know, though, Nick. It doesn't, it doesn't look like what I said. It doesn't happen because they're a different brand, no. because everybody in this industry is a different brand. I wouldn't, do, I wouldn't finish hair off the same way as Chris does. No. And it might be the same sort of mood, but he wouldn't do it the same way as me. It's vice versa, because no. at the end of the destination is your brand, the way you are, who you are, and what you do, and how you do it, and what, the way you feel you want to present it. And I think that's very important. You know? And listen to what he's yeah. saying, because it's really about owning your brand, and you yeah. need to really understand what your brand is, because if you don't understand what your brand is, you're yeah. going to be lost in this industry. And when you can identify what your brand is and know what you want to be putting out into this industry, it lets you drive so much faster, quicker, harder, and really circle the people around you that can help you get to those places. And there's people out there that will love you and care enough about you to help you, but you got to go do the work, and you got to get out there and try to align with those people. But they're there. I'm living proof of it. You got great people like this out there in the industry. And, you know, it's all about helping each other. It's all about raising the bar in this industry. And you can hear the legacy this guy has uh, come from. You can hear the legacy he's created and being able to pass it on to, uh, you know, people like myself. Um, I'm just honored. I'm yeah, privileged. And, and, and I, I thank you. Naha, I'm, I'm so pleased to, that the, one of the first times I went to Naha in America, I flew from England. And I think there was uh, 50 people there. Um, and it was in San Diego, actually. And I thought, oof, and I, I had to give an award away and everything. And I, I went up and I said, this is amazing idea. It's a great concept. Um, and I really wanted this thing to grow. I wanted it to be, you know, it, like a creative force of people getting together, which it really has become. And we're going to have like four and a half thousand people there tomorrow night. Unbelievable. Uh, hairdressers. And we're going to have so many nominated hairdressers, so many great winners. And uh, it, it's like a wonderful... Oscars of our industry and you know I expect to see this really grow to 10 to 15 20,000 hairdressers and then they get the bug then they start doing photographs yeah. uh, you know doing photographic work which is your biggest critic the eye of the camera will really tear you apart and really really show you how you really have to do your hair and how you have to move forwards with your own career and everything else and publicity now is incredible you know in my days uh, you know you had to all look at a through a camera upside down when i started you know they were painting the magazines then right them. yeah they did drawings before <laughs> remember you came to my house you saw it. they did drawings before they did photographs yeah, i know in my dad's time so so now to that point everybody has the opportunity of photographing their own work getting it published getting their brand noticed by the world of hairdressers and especially by the world out there to get their clients into the salon knowing that they're special because they've really put out their lives and it's all about emotion it's about giving yourself to the industry you're not gonna you're not gonna do it by turning up at nine and leaving at five in the afternoon you're not gonna do it like that you're gonna have to work eat sleep drink hairdressing 24 hours a day and that's seven days a week and that's the only way you're going to become successful yeah it's really not a career it's more of a lifestyle <laughs> it's more of a lifestyle without no. without question before my mother passed away she said you should have been a doctor i said why because you know and this is a few years ago she says you're 65 years old you're playing with dolls in the basement <laughs> you know and I said, yeah because i want to try new techniques out with hair you know and she never got it past her head she died at 91 she was an amazing person and she never could get it around her head that i was still playing with hair and looking at things and running back, you know, you know, I went to Jamaica for a holiday and I came back with a, a dried palm leaf, you know, like a branch. And I ran downstairs at three in the morning. I got my irons out and I started working with irons. And I found this actually could bend the palm leaves. I thought, my goodness, I can lay hair on top of it and I can do amazing avant-garde hair, right? Yeah. You know, and then we went to London, the alternative, yeah. didn't we? And we did some great things, you know, for leukemia, also for ourselves because you're taking the next step and you, you've got to be and you know you're terrified every time you go on stage you're terrified every time you do hair if you really want to push the envelope you absolutely have to do it fearlessly without without reserve and without feeling for what you're going to feel like because you know at the end of the day it's got to be something really fresh something really new something that people can use and dilute and trickle down to the salons to the client looking in the mirror when you're standing behind the chair
I think that's, inc- that's no, I think that's incredible advice. And I think that's, you know, I mean, we're here at Naha. I think that's something that people need to think about Naha. I mean, while it's a competition, you're really competing against yourself. You know, yeah. I mean, you're doing, you're, you know, like, I mean, we're in the same category, you know, it's, um, it's, and have been numerous yeah. times. And for us, it's, it's, you know, it, yes, you're competing, but you're really competing against yourself. And I think you got to be really incredibly proud of what you walk in there with. And, um, and when you walk out, whatever happens you know you get the trophy you don't get the trophy it's the journey that you take and you can hear yeah. the journey in uh and the legacy and what he has and i just think that you keep that in mind as you go into that um what you what you've created is definitely um be proud of it and own it there you go yeah i think that's about it for Sounds this episode we'll be back we'll be back next week for our live show and our subject is <laughs> no it's uh it's been a pleasure thank you guys for letting us do the interview and uh uh good luck everybody out there yes yeah? good luck with your careers and, and be proud of who you are and you know what it's wonderful to be a hairdresser isn't it it's great and we look forward to seeing you on the naha stage we'll see you at the presentation thank you